Hey, how you going? Welcome to the channel. My name's Pete. Um, I guess I've got to start off with an apology for the uh, that really bad audio on last week's uh, episode. Um, yeah, so that video was done, I don't know, six weeks, two months ago. Um, and it was before I had this new and improved microphone. Uh, so, yeah, my bad. Sorry about that. Um, I think that's the last of the any videos that I have from uh, back then. Um, no, I still have one more. Uh, but it was even before I had that crappy microphone. So, and that'll be months away before you see that one. Um, anyway, uh, so this week's episode, um, getting the gearbox together. Um, yeah, uh, everything seemed to go reasonably smoothly. Um, yeah, let's have a look. Enjoy. As I mentioned before, this crown wheel, um, that looks to be in really good condition. Uh, as to the condition of the smaller gear at the front, well, that's a matter of opinion. Okay, so I've gone through and I've got this housing and everything in it all nice and shiny and clean. Right now at the point where we start the exciting part of putting everything back together. Something that came out of this, or I should say, this bit of tube um, that I found lying on the bottom here. I think I've just found where it comes from. Uh, I can get you in there. That fitting there. I think that's a uh, lubrication line of some sort. And this piece would have gone on the end of it to locate it into one of these guys up here from the uh, that valve block so it's good it looks like the uh, the pipe's broken but I do need to find out which which one of those fittings it goes into I'm gonna push the handset in there to see that pipe there so that was connected to that other piece that I just had and it's hit something and it's been bent up I'm still trying to work out where the heck it goes to or used to go to I'm gonna have a look in the workshop manual and see what I can see um, it looks like it just does a come straight down the pipe itself does a u-turn and then feeds into the center of the pinion and lubricates all the gears along the pinion shaft from the inside. So, yay, found it. And as you can see from this angle, I can't see the end of that pinion shaft, even if I come right down, if I put my camera inside there. All right, that's my camera in there, but I can't even see the camera from this angle. All right, so at this point I'm thinking, it's probably worth my while to pull the diff center out and must make sure I get this bit right. Um, <laughs> don't know if you can hear in the background, my neighbors are firing up a party, so good on them. In retrospect, it's probably not a bad idea to pull this apart anyway, um, just to make sure that these last couple of bits are, are still good. Uh, I wonder if I should try and take out the diff lock. So to get this side out I've got to knock that roll pin out so that I can lift the, uh, the diff lock out and then this bearing carrier will come out. Alright got the diff lock out I've got a rag under there to uh, so it doesn't damage anything as it falls and I'm going to put my fingers in there to make sure a little more damage happens. Just kidding. Hmm. There we go. And thank goodness the bearing looks good. that one bearing 
has the uh, the cup and the other bearing has the cone or other side I should say end plate whatever you want to call them so there's that bent lubrication pipe and the center of the pinion which this random piece I found on the bottom is a lovely neat fit in the middle so yay found that so pulling this apart is not the end of the world in fact I'm kind of glad I did it I can go through and see that the uh, pinion gear is in, is in good nick but that's a matter of opinion um, you can also check the bearings uh, and oh, line you up you can see right through there with the naked eye you can kind of see there's a little bit of stuff in there that needs to be cleaned out um, I kind of thought that was going to be the end of my weekend because I'm going to be waiting on parts uh, to finish to fix this this piece that little plastic piece I believe that's a right angle or used to be a right angle that the pipe just comes in and that angles it into the uh, into the center um, but I believe I can still reassemble the whole front of this gearbox and just leave the uh, the brakes and trumpet housings till last so yeah we'll keep going with that <coughs> okay it actually took quite some force to knock that out I think they've actually knurled that in somehow into the uh, the gearbox housing so probably have to lock tight that back in and I'm thinking also the p-clamp that went around that to hold it to the housing I might actually tack weld or braze that on so that it doesn't uh, so that it can't slip out this bend here that I'm trying to straighten it's kind of at the point where that's about to just split open so I'm in the shed I'm just going to hit it with a bit of heat and see if that will soften it and straighten it a bit easier Okay, so I've reattached that lube tube that goes into the center of the, uh, the pinion. Uh, I haven't done the, the smaller section of pipe, uh, but that, pit, uh, that bit is back in, and it was just as tight going in as it was coming out. And I've added some uh, Loctite bearing retainer around the top here, uh, just to make sure it's not gonna move. And it is pretty tight, so I'm quite confident with that. So looking at this tube, uh, I've straightened it out for the most part. I believe that's how that's supposed to go, although there's bits broken off the back. Um, I've got, uh, uh, what do you call it? There's another um, shoulder inside there, which is not coming out, it's being difficult. There we are. I've got that out of the old piece and I'm about to just flare that and then I can reshape this to fit back in to where it's supposed to be. Uh, I want to make sure that this has clearance inside there. Something's happened and I'm guessing this picked up inside the pinion shaft and that's why it's done its damage. It's about to reflare the end of this this pipe. Um, the old one was a double flare uh, which in Australia you have to have that by law for brakes this is just a lubrication line on a backhoe so a single flare will be fine for what we're doing so that came out good enough I'll put that under the wire buff just to get rid of any sharp edges but that's lovely so I have just reattached that panel um, <clears throat> it's not that big a deal except uh, I think I've been on this Project 580 now for about three weekends. Um, to be fair, I only get really get one day a week to work on this. Um, but that is now the first part of uh, reassembly that I've done. Kind of. A turning point, I think. Everything else has been cleaning, repairing, and diagnosing. So, this is a good thing. So just in the process here of going through, um, this is the forward and reverse control valve bank that sits on top of the gearbox. 
Uh, that's your actual spool, whoops, spool health there. Um, I've just stripped this all down and cleaned it out just to make sure there's no metal fragments or anything in there. Now it's a matter of going through and replacing all the O-rings on the uh, on all the plugs and the end caps and and so on. All right. And again, don't put anything in dry. A little bit of grease or something, oil, anything, as long as it's not dry. And there we go, it's just that. Uh, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven times over. There we go. I'll bring you back when it's all done. So there we go, all reassembled, and a big bunch of O rings left over. Well, replaced. Good day, on to the next job. Quick little guide on making a gasket. Um, there's a few different methods on how to do this. <clears throat> Probably the best method is to go to the shop and just buy the right part. That's not what I'm doing though. Um, another method, you can sort of smear this area with grease and then you lay down your, your paper and when you peel it off, you have an imprint there of where all the holes are. You can use like a hole punch to punch them through or scissors if there's uh, veins that have to go through. Um, or, method I like, um, just a little gasket hammer, work out where your holes are, and gently tap it, and that cuts the hole. And then you need like an o-ring pick or something just to uh, flick out that bit of paper. Easy peasy. So there we go. All tapped out. Uh, another little tip. Get a couple of bolt holes and put the bolts in just to hold it in place. Um, yeah, um, your little whatever you call those can get stuck in the hole, so just get a O-ring pick or a screwdriver or something and just pick them out. But that uh, came out well. Don't think I've missed any. I think I got them all. Yep, they're all good. Getting late in the day, and we're pretty much done. But I would like to get at least one side of this apart. Like I say, the day is getting late. It's hard to see what's going on, even I can't see what I'm doing anymore, so I think I might call it a day. Not sure how well you can see in there. That's the lubrication hole, and that's a little bit of torque converter swarf sitting inside there. Yesterday I was getting a little bit excited with the notion that I'm starting to put things back together. Well, that was short-lived. Still pulling things apart. Oops. Yeah, 
There we go. So we've got this piece of the puzzle all cleaned up and ready to reassemble. Um, here's the piston. Seals and everything look fine, so happy to leave them run. Just so you can see, piston goes in. That's it. Done. Not a lot of difference between assembly and disassembly on these. Except you're going the other way. Um, one point that is worth noting, and this is also true when you're rebuilding an engine with gudgeon pins and the like. Um, don't know if that's going to focus. When they make circuits, they do it, they're punched out in a machine. Um, and what that does is the holes are not perfectly parallel. Uh, these little eyes at the top here, uh, they're kind of a, a cone, tapered kind of a setup. And so that does make, a, make these things directional as to whether they go on this way or that way. Um, same deal for gudgeon pins on your pistons. Um, but yeah, just worth noting, um, if you try and put your circlet pliers in at the wide end, they're just going to slip off constantly. And these things kind of pop off with reasonable ease anyway. So, just a little FYI. My homemade pressing tool. I spent hours making that, you know, cutting that piece out, cutting it off. Yeah, that's not true. There we go. Done. I probably should have mentioned before, uh, I did actually go through the workshop manual and I found all of the wear limits um, for the clutch packs and for the brakes. Uh, I did measure them up, I should have done it on camera, so sorry about that. Um, but yeah, it turns out they're almost brand new. They're like about 20% worn, uh, maybe not even that for both the clutch packs and the brakes. Um, so yeah, with that in mind, yeah, good to go. Um, if they were like 60-70% worn, I'd think about changing them while we had it apart, but there's still, you know, plenty of service life left in them. So yeah, good to go. So we're now at the point where we can put all of the gearbox back together. Uh, the workshop manual says to flip it on its end and do it this way. Um, that way gears aren't trying to fall out or load themselves up in any silly fashion. And it all seems to go together easier according to the workshop manual. I believe them. So, uh, the shuttle is all reassembled. There's an idler gear there I've just cleaned. 
I've yet to clean the gears that go on the uh, the lay shaft. Um, so yeah, I'll get onto that and we'll get into it. So this is kind of going together well enough, except for the part where all 600 components have to be assembled at once. I just don't have that many arms. I've been about 20 minutes now trying to load this detent in to this thing. A moment there I thought I found the trick but no. Okay we've got a little detent here which is supposed to line up on these guys and there's a spring down inside there so I'm trying to assemble this whole thing. I've already been at this for about 20 minutes so far. With Zero success to date. So there we are, about 35 minutes and I got it in. That was a challenge. So this is proving quite an interesting challenge. Um, the other selector, I've had to take that off, so all that effort I just went to putting that little detent in, that ball bearing. Um, I've now got to do that on the other shaft as well. These two have to go together as one. Not sure why I'm going to film this bit. Maybe just because it'll be fun to listen to me swear and curse. Need a bigger screwdriver. I just got that. Holy dooly. I think I've got to lift that shaft up out of the here of this housing so I can lean over a bit. Or maybe not. Look at that. Success. To some degree. Oops. 
pull out something. I would break that. Is reasonably important. It appears I've left a circlip out from somewhere. Um, so I've got to get this little thrust bearing out. I want to do it without taking all of this apart. Um, can't really get into it. A little trick, if you want to put some mild magnetism into your screwdriver, just get an existing magnet, run it down a few times, and you know you're not going to lift a truck with it, but for something like this, it'll do just fine. So I'm pulling this apart because I've got a spare circlip. There is a circlip gap there. That's just everything wasn't sitting down as neat as it should. So. Oops. Let's have another go. There we go, that looks a bit better. Alright, this is the last gear to go in. Wouldn't it be hilarious if this was meant to go in first? But it's not. I think that leans over and meshes in with that one. Awesome! Oh yeah, that shaft's leaning over, that's why. Because that's not sitting on the bearing, that's leaning up against the um, the crown wheel, which is why it's leaning away. Wiping down the mounting surfaces with a bit of thinners, just to make sure it's going to... the gasket material, not gasket material, the... Uh, what do you call it? Loctite 515. Just to make sure that's going to stick. After last weekend, you'd think I'd have enough sense to remember to bring a punch, but no, I didn't. So there we are, the end's on, I've got the... Uh, I did have that nipped up, just to pull the bearing in, and everything seems to be looking just lovely. 
getting a bit late in the day I'm gonna call it a day here all right so I think I'll end this video here um, I was really hoping to have this all assembled and back into the machine um, and fired up uh, to show that you know it's all working and everything's going fine by the end of this video but there is so much more left to go um, I've still got to put all the handbrake assembly on here then flip it back over repair that lubrication tube and then put the uh, the axles back on then lift it in and even then before I fire it up I've still got to put the torque converter back in got to pull the oil cooler off and flush it out um, and I want to get the water blaster in and clean all of that before I put any of this back in so there's at least one more video to go before uh, before we can take it for a drive um, but we are getting there so anyway um, thank you very much for watching do appreciate that uh, please like subscribe leave your comments as always uh, and hit that notification bell all right thanks see ya